Just recently, I got back from a shoot in New Jersey. I was producing and directing a corporate spot. And I just wanted to share a few of the experiences that we had on that shoot. I feel like I've been doing this kind of video quite a bit recently. And I feel like I've learned a lot of things from, you know, how we choose the cameras we're gonna use, the lenses, which location we're gonna film in, and how we're gonna think about the lighting and everything. And I felt like it would be a good time to sort of take this shoot, use it as sort of like a kickstart to just sort of break it down and talk about why we went with what we did and how we got the results that we did. I'm trying to keep this video a bit less formal and not, you know, fluff it up too much, but really just talk about, you know, the work that we did, how, what the images look like, and all the people that were involved to make it happen. Just to spare some of the, you know, pre-production details, I was producing and directing, so I did all the crew booking and hotels and also was in charge of making sure that the themes and you know, the creative for the project was pretty set in stone and we were going in with a good idea. The way this video was gonna be structured, it was gonna be structured around an event that was happening at the, this location here, which is NJ Pack in Newark, New Jersey. It's like a performing arts center, really pretty location. One of the things that I did first was just sort of like look it up on Google and find some images of the place. I always take that pretty loosely because when we get there, we wanna, you know, scout it out and see what works best. So here is the room that we were gonna be filming in. You can kind of see, you know, that the there's a lot of natural light coming in. It's warm like I was going for. I feel like it painted a pretty good, you know, picture of like this corporate feel, but not too like sterile or uninviting. You know, we went for like a softer interview seat, which I don't know, in my head, I felt like, oh, this is inviting and <laughs> like comfortable or something. I think it worked out, but we really liked this spot. It had a lot of natural light. The windows were huge. Uh, and again, we felt like we had a lot of room. There was no foot traffic nearby. So, you know, it was the best closest to the elevators too. So, you know, all in all, we were like, this is the spot we got to do it. One of the things that we were keeping in mind was that we were filming with the Alexa 35. Uh, we'll talk about the camera and the lens choice in a second. Um, but whenever you choose a location with natural light, you got to be mindful of which direction the camera is going to be pointing in. Uh, Luke, my DP for this round, he was pretty confident that the Alexa 35 could handle you know, shooting out the window or near the window with the lights that we had brought in to supplement, you know, kind of what we saw. Now more about the cameras. For this shoot, we were shooting with the Alexa 35 and then Zeiss Supreme Primes. You know, producing this one, I kind of had the ability to bring all the crew together and develop the kind of look that I wanted for the project. And I felt like, one, I really wanted to use the Alexa 35, but I felt like it was going to be the best bet for interviews, B-roll, you know, running around doing all that stuff. You can see in some of these clips here, Josh just sort of building out this camera in a way that fit most situations that we threw at it. Luke, Josh, and myself had a few conversations just about the different scenarios that we would be filming in. You know, he was just building the camera in a way that was, one, easy for him to pull focus on. It was also something that he talked with Luke about to make sure that all the different scenarios that we were gonna be in, you know, whether we were on sticks or on an easy rig or whatever, Josh was crushing it on this shoot. Let's talk about crew for a second. We had a healthy crew for this unit. We also had a second unit that was out filming at the same time, getting like B-roll of New Jersey and some other places that we were contracted to shoot at. Um, you know, Colin Osbury, he produced and directed that unit. I'll focus on this unit stuff, like the interview and everything, because that's only the, really the iPhone clips that I have. Um, but he's got a YouTube channel. Check him out. He's just crushing it with cameras and joy and creativity. Wonderful man. Quick rundown of the crew. We had Gavin doing all of our sound. He was mixing and recording everything. We had Jared sort of doing all of the AD production elements. You know, there was a lot of moving parts for this, as I mentioned, a whole second unit. So he was making sure, you know, we were on time to things. We weren't running behind. Interviewees were coming in at the right time. All that stuff that you just can't be worrying about at the same time as everything else is going on. So he crushed that as well. I had Cam doing all of my gaffing for me. Uh, he did a really good job. I kind of threw him into this position last minute and, you know, we didn't have like circuit chasers or anything like that. So, you know, he actually did a really good job in tracking down the building manager and making sure that we had enough circuitry in the room to, you know, support the lighting that we'll talk about in a second um, and not blow anything. We're not from New Jersey, so we hired a local grip to one, drive the truck that we rented from Double Down Lighting. Uh, full of grip gear and all the fixtures that we rented in terms of lighting equipment. 
then we had Luke and Josh on the camera team. Luke being amazing. I just DP. He's done a lot of DP work for me. We've went to school together. You know, both those guys did an incredible job as well. Let's just talk about lighting for a second. I want to show the interview shot here um, after I show all the stuff that we did to sort of set it up. We like to do big sources for lighting, especially for like corporate spots. If we can, you know, fit it in the location that we're filming in. Um, that's another reason why we went with this spot. For our main key light, we went with a sky panel S360C, and we pushed that through uh, an eight by eight full grid of diffusion. Uh, as you can see, we're starting to set up the interview location right up against those windows there. Um, pushing that sky panel through this eight by didn't bat an eye against the back of the window. And on the backlight there, we had a uh, Spectrum 4 light mat, uh, just to sort of bring up a little bit of edge on our subject. We added in a couple of different things on the sides for spill and fill, uh, just to sort of control our image. You know, our subject here is the subject, you know what I'm saying? So we wanted to make sure that they looked really good uh, and lit very well. So with all that said, here is the interview shot that we landed on for our ACAM. I feel like this looks really nice. I'm looking at it right now in log, but if we do a quick little conversion to Rec. 709, and then we add in a print film emulation LUT in the Cineon log, just to get an idea of kind of where this may end up in terms of color and contrast. I feel like we have a really rock solid base to work off of. Of course, you know, we can do some tweaking to really sculpt it and make sure that it looks bright, punchy, happy, wonderful, all the things that you would want from a corporate commercial shoot. But, you know, for starters, I feel like straight out of camera, looks great. So jumping forward a little bit here, like I mentioned, we had another set of interviews that we had planned to do. You know, there was just a couple of variables for this second round of interviews that we had to keep in mind. The first one was that we were in a completely different location. That adds its own set of complications to things, but you know, that was just one thing we had to consider. The other one was that a lot of my crew, my DP, my sound mixer, my gaffer, they were all unavailable. So I had to go and find and source a whole other crew for these interviews. So for the second set, I first solved my gear issue. I rented the same gear package that we did, relatively speaking, from Double Down in New Jersey. I got Chris, our grip, he was available to drive the truck and meet us on site for our shoot. Josh recommended James to me. Uh, I brought him on as my gaffer and he crushed it. And I brought Blaine Westrop on as my DP for this. Uh, and just overall, the team did a really good job in you know making everything look similar to the last shoot, but at the same time, taking into account all the different variables that we had that you know were in a completely different location than before. So we had to get a little creative with how we lit this one. So when we got to this location, the first thing that Blaine and I did uh, was just sort of walk around um, and get some options for an interview spot. And we eventually landed on this sort of straight on shot. We wanted it to feel pretty similar to what we had done before. And so once we decided on this location, we just hit the ground running and getting it lit. So once again, we had the S360, big, big light. As you can see, we have a lot of spill and fill kind of going on. So we were controlling it with an eight by, across the ceiling there to sort of control it from splashing all over the back. We had a four by floppy on the side, controlling the spill out to the right. We also had a double net kind of hanging across the front of the eight by diffusion that we were pushing through on the 360, uh, just sort of controlling the light spill across the desks and on the lower half of the body. We also had a four by bounce in the right over there. We had a light mat in the back to act as a sort of edge for our subject. We also had these two M8 HMIs in the side over there, kind of pushing some hard light onto the background. I feel like we made a really great interview image uh, that matched pretty well with the last set. You know, it's not gonna be perfect, but it, it could intercut pretty nicely. Um, and as we're putting the project together, I can say, it's working pretty well. So here's the ACAM shot that we were able to get from this setup here. Um, I'm again looking at the log image, but if we convert it to Rec. 709, one thing that I love about this is the hard light in the background. I feel like it really separates the subject from the foreground. 
Um, some of the set design that we did, I think some of the colors in the background, like the blue chairs and the green chairs, they really add a nice little bit of pop of color. And even the red chair that the interviewee was going to sit in, um, a little bit of an unintentional sort of bit there, but I think it works pretty nicely. Overall, I really like this image too. It's pretty soft, looks great, very bright and commercially. And then if we add a print film LUT on top of a Cineon log, I feel like, again, we get a very nice contrasty, saturated, great looking shot. So after all was said and done, Josh and I hopped on a plane and headed back to DC, where I'm here now making this video. And that's pretty much all I was able to capture for this shoot. I'd love to make more of these videos if you guys are interested in that, something a little bit more, you know, informal. We're just chatting, looking at a couple of clips. If you have any questions about some of the things that I mentioned or forgot to mention in this video, Feel free to drop a question or two down in the comments. I try to respond to everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to make more stuff like this down the road, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.